everybody this is your boy neil Aubrey taylor aka master aubrey live and direct merry christmas to all you brothers and sisters who may be waking up opening your presents and enjoying your eggnog with rum and getting tris and getting drunk and twisted it's early morning i got a special christmas for y'all um title of this video is called demonic possession through family curses yes because i know a lot of you brothers and sisters celebrate that pagan ass holiday and i know a lot of you brothers and sisters are 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 affected by this tradition so i figured it'd be a perfect opportunity to talk about demonic possession through family curses because i had a personal experience in the spirit world earlier this morning that made me question the vision I'm still doing interpretation on the vision, still trying to figure it out. Now the Holy Spirit did this give me revelation, but I'm not gonna get too deep in the vision. But I want to talk about how you can be possessed in the spirit by demonic forces through family curses. Now, the family curses could be various amount of different things for my experience in the vision was it had to do with the words of my late dear mother right who used to be in christianity hard body and um when i was growing up i know i'm getting a little personal but not too personal but you know i just want to link it up to this topic when i was young you know my mom's to tell me all kind of crazy shit when she was Christian, you know, like, oh yeah, you play these demonic games, man, you're demon and all this crazy stuff. So she called me all this kind of crazy names, like, yo, when you grow up, you'll be a woman beater and all this crazy shit. And people don't realize when you tell your kids these negative things growing up, you put a curse on your life. You know, as much as I love my mother and God rest her soul, you know, she said a lot of very hard things that I'm still fighting up to this day as a man within my own subconscious mind. But in this vision, reason why it's a testimonial because it was a revelation. It was a breaking of a generational curse, a family curse, a parental curse that was placed on me from since I was a child. And the reason why I brought up that topic because I know a lot of you brothers and sisters struggle with the words, the negative words of your parents, the traumatic words that your parents told you when you was a kid and it affects you in your adulthood. So I'm here to tell you, look, there's a solution because I figured this out. And um, it sounds unorthodox, but I don't see no other way of figuring this out because you're gonna spend so much money Going to therapy, not saying that going to therapy ain't wrong. You should go to therapy if you need it. But since YouTube is, is therapy for me, and I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, that's my therapy, right? And I would say in this vision, I remember my mother and I was somewhere. And there was other people there too. And we were like in this booth and we were fixing things. And I remember my mom was talking nonsense to me. I don't remember exactly what she was saying. But then I told, and I just felt the urge to see this subconsciously to her. I was like, yo, you know when you used to tell me I was a demon child? That's what I used to, that's what I was telling my mother in the dream. Because she was telling me a whole bunch of nonsense and she was kind of getting pe me pissed off in the dream. So when I went in the dream, I my mother i said look remember when you used to call me a, a demon you used to call me a, a child of the devil i said you know what you're right i am satan's child and then i felt a possession like i felt a slight demonic possession took over me i felt like another force just entered into me and i felt empowered and i started walking towards us because then she said oh what did you say and then she came out of the boot, I came out of the boot, and we were like face to face with each other. And I had this evil grin on my face, 
and she was scared. Like I said, yeah, I said, you remember when you used to call me all those things and you used to call me all these gritty names when I was young and playing video games and all that stuff. So I was like, in my subconscious mind and the vision, I was actually facing my demon by accepting the name calling, owning it. I was owning my demons because this, 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 this traumatic event between me and my mother has still been plaguing me for so many years. Maybe the reason why I was in the occult, maybe the reason why I, I dealt with dark magic, maybe the reason why I dealt with Lucifer and all that stuff. So I told her, say straight up, you know what? I owe my demon. You used to call me a demon child. You used to call me this devil child and that I will beat women and hurt women. And I'm like, I know myself. I'm never going to say a woman never will hurt me or never women will never hurt me. But I know who I am. And as long as I know who I am, I don't care what anybody got to say about me or think about me. Because for years, I always was trying to live up to my mother's expectations or my father's expectations. And I can never be that. I am what God created me to be. You have to accept me as how God created me to be. You feel me? I might not be your cup of tea, but I'm truly, truly going to be me at all times, no matter how you feel about me. And you got to understand that parents are going to project their fears onto their kids because that in the vision, this is how this shit played out and it's playing out so beautiful. Now, listen, when I said that to her, I was ready in that, slight i was like halfway in and halfway out it was like there was another part of me that was being taken over by this demon when i said those words and then there was another part of me that was still aware and conscious of my own self right and guess who won that battle let's go into it so while while when my mother was saying oh she was acting real scared. And actually, this person in the vision, she, yeah, she looked like my mother, but she didn't really look 100% like my mother. So I really think it was a counterfeit spirit at the end of the day because she, it was certain things that were off in the vision to begin with. And she was wearing all gray, like a gray sweat suit shit going on. And um, I was telling her, like, yeah. I was just explaining everything that she was telling me when I was a kid. Like, I will be a woman beater. I'm a demon child. Your child of the devil. So I say, you know what? I own it. Because this is the thing I learned through therapy and all that shit. If you own your demons, they can't control you. If you face your fears, they can't do anything for you. Because once you face your fear, you overcome the fear of the fear itself. So if my greatest fear was becoming the thing that my mother was trying to curse me with, or hex me with all these years, oh, you'll be a woman beater. Oh, you'll be this and you'll be that. And you try to fight against that. In actuality, you start to become those things that your parents put on you because you don't own up to it. It's not saying that I am a demon, it's saying that, oh, I, I'm always a goody two shoe, but I'm a human. There's going to be times where I may be very fucking vengeful and spiteful. And I might appear to somebody as a demon. In other cases, I may be the most genuine, humblest person you ever meet. And you're like, damn, you're an angel from God. Two different perspectives, two different people. Am I still the same Neil? Yes. So when I came to that realization that I'm going to be who I am, and I don't need nobody to stereotype me. I don't need nobody to put me in a box because of their religious upbringing. I don't need nobody to dictate how my life is supposed to be on earth. Only God judges me. Only God can judge me. Only God can determine where I go from here. Not my mother, not my father, not my siblings, not my family, not my friend, nobody. And... When I looked at her, she started getting scared. She, I said, yo, I need you to, I, I need to hear that you are sorry because look, the shit that you put me through, this is why I am the way that I am. So she got scared and she got on her knees and she submitted to me. 
she was so scared she thought I was gonna hurt her. I said, listen. She's like, I'm sorry. And I was, and I was like, oh, like I don't want to hear it. I forgive you because that's who I am. Oh, would you hurt me? I said, listen, if you ever call me that again, I would hurt you. And then I walked away. I said, you got that? Don't ever disrespect me like that. I said, don't ever call me no demon. You don't know who I am. You don't know why I came into this family. You don't know why God chose me to be born through you. And all you could do is call me a demon child, a woman beater, and all these evil things because you were projecting your own fears on me. And I had to live with that scorn for the majority of my life. I'm almost 30 years old and I'm still fighting those demons in my head. I said, no, I'm walking with God. I could only be what God created me to be. Because if you really look at the story of Jesus Christ, my life kind of mirrors that in, in a similar aspect because when Jesus Christ was healing the sick and raising the dead and walking on water and doing all those miracles that people love, even the Pharisees who were so religious, so caught up in religion, they were considering the works of Christ to be the works of Beelzebub, which Beelzebub is a demonic entity, right? which they blasphemed the Holy Spirit because they didn't even know what spirit they were in when they were judging the situation, right? So because I was born with special abilities to, you know, psychic abilities, things like that when I was young, and I really didn't talk much. You know, I didn't talk till like I was two years old, so people thought that something was wrong with me growing up. But the true reason why I didn't talk when I was up to two years old because I already knew that my mother felt some type of way towards me because I couldn't be the child that she wanted me to be. I couldn't be the gender of child that she wanted me to be. I could only be what God created me to be. How much freaking children in this world, brothers and sisters, suffer with the fact of rejection from their parents from the womb. See, that was the curse that I faced in the dream and I overcame it by conquering the shaming language, the shaming tactic of what she put on me, that curse. When I used to play Pokemon, when I used to watch Dragon Ball Z, when I used to play Power Ranger, I used to fight my brothers and play fight my cousins. Oh, you're a demon child. Oh, you talking to animals outside? Oh, you're crazy. I went through the mental hospital because of that curse. And you know what I did? Instead of allowing the demon that I was possessed with in the vision to take control over my actions, thinking, I allow conscious, logical reasoning, knowing what I knew in the Bible, allowing the teachings of the scriptures to guide me. God fell back and allowed me to go through that because he to see if I learned what I learned and know, and, and I knew what I knew. And I knew what I knew because I studied the scriptures for myself. I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I say, you know what? I'm not going to hurt you. I'm better than that. I just wanted you to apologize for all the hurtful shit you said to me when I was a little kid growing up and I didn't have no conscious awareness of those things. And it's not to say that those things that I was playing with as a child, those video games that were demonic, is not true. But you're putting, a, you're putting a stereotype on me and you're putting a curse on me based on your religious patterns of thinking. And it's your own fear. And this is what happened at the end of the vision. When I walk away from her, when she realized that I wasn't going to hurt her, I just gave her that ice cold grill. Like, yeah, I'm better than that. And I will never have you or anybody disrespect me like that. I'm God's gift to this earth. I'm God's gift to your family. I'm God's gift to this family. Yes, I might not fit in with the family. Yeah, I may not be what y'all want me to be, but I am what God created me to be.
And the only person that needs to know that is me. Me. So I faced my demons in the dream. I didn't allow the demon to take full control of me because I took the control over the demon by saying, I forgive you. Regardless of what you said to me, you said I was a woman beater, said that I'm a demon child from hell and I'm Satan spawn and all that crazy shit. I said, I forgive you because I'm better than that. And I'm greater than that. And I'm too fucking great to be stereotyped with a low vibrational word such as that. I would no longer have my life controlled by such words by anybody. Right? So when I walked away, I felt that spirit just disappear. And I felt a renewing of strength. I felt a part of me that was missing for so long arised in me. Like, yes, I am free from that curse. And when I woke up from the vision, I felt different. I kind of questioned the vision. I'm like, yo, what is this? I didn't get possessed. I didn't have to fight. I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here. And I guess that was God's gift to me this Christmas to say, yo, I'm going to make you overcome the thing that you feared the most. I'm going to make you overcome the thing that you've been dealing with for all your life. That's my gift to you today. Because you have proven yourself that you really want to walk the, the straight and narrow path. That you truly want to serve. So I'm going to put you through this test to face those demons. So I hope this testimony will help you, brothers and sisters, to look at your family and people in your family who may have some type of beef with you, who may feel some type of way about you because you're the black sheep of the family, because you are spiritual. They can't understand you. So by the misunderstanding of you, they, they label you these stereotypes and that because they label you these stereotypes, it's been possessing your actions. It's been, it's been possessing your motives. It's been possessing how you interact with the opposite sex. I'm going to keep it real. Like a lot of things that my mother said to me growing up made me deal with the opposite sex from a negative perspective. And also having, also having the, the opposite sex look at me like I'm a demon sometimes. Because I'm going to keep it real with you, sisters. It's a lot of times I be at work or I'm in the streets and I have sisters. That, that show me love and I'm not going to, I got 50, 50 balance. I'm not going to talk about like from a negative point, point of view. I see balance. I see, I see the, I see the sisters that do want to show you love and I appreciate that. But then I see the curse of what my mother put on me from the sisters that look at me like I'm the scourge of the earth that will look at me like, damn, yo, um, who this nigga is? Oh, he a fucking lame and he's that and I, he's weird and, yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video and you look at me like that, I'm pretty sure you know who you are. I don't need to call you out. But I just wanted to make this video clear. The reason why you do it and you don't even know why you do it is because of curses. But today, I'm, I, I, I'm grateful to say to God and to the world, I'm free from that shit. I'm free from stereotypes. I'm free from the curse of generational family line bullshit. I call it bullshit because family will project their fears on you because they couldn't be what they needed to be when they were growing up. So they automatically project their fears on their kids. Sisters, how many times have you been in relationships with men and you were dealing with men from the perspective of your parents, like your mother? You saw how your mother dealt with your father. So you end up being just like your mother and you resent that when you was a kid. But you end up, the same thing that you resented, you became. I'm going to keep it real with you, sisters. A lot of times, you resent your mother because you saw how, especially if your father was in your life, you resented your mother because you didn't like how she was treating your pops. But then when you got older, you became the same thing that you resented in your mother. Right? So you end up playing a generational curse on yourself. Because you didn't face the demon. You didn't face that demon in the closet. You didn't own it. You didn't look at the possibility to say, yo, yo, 
I hate this, what I saw in my mother. I didn't like that. But you know what? There's a possibility that I could become that. How do I deal with this? And allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you through your journey. Brothers, how much times have you been in a relationship with your father? You saw your father beat your mother. You didn't like that shit. So you, you end up being the total opposite or try to be the total opposite of your father. But then in a the case, you end up being just like your dad. Because the apple don't fall far from the tree, brothers. And in order for you to break the gener generational curse that's on your family line, you have to first be aware of it. Then you have to have acceptance of it. Then you have to overcome it in yourself, not as in being under possession of it. What I said in this dream, I overcame what my mother placed on me as a curse from childhood by saying, you know what? I've been subconsciously acting like a demon without even knowing that I'm acting like a demon because I'm actually replaying the curse consciously trying to avoid it. But the more I try to avoid it, the more people treat me like a demon with no reason at all. And I could be, probably be the most this person you ever meet on the play, on the face of this earth, the most kindest person you ever meet on the face of this earth, but because this curse is spiritual, the more you try to run away from it, the more you, the, the universe is going to bring it towards you to face it. And I say, you know what? What would happen if I was to become a devil? What would happen if I did become demonically possessed? What what would happen if I did? become the thing that she feared the most. And then, and I came to that realization in the vision by telling my mother, yo, you know what? All those years that you was telling me that shit, guess what? You know what? You're right. I am that shit. I own that shit. I am the Baphomet. I am the nigga with the goat horns. This to scare her ass. And guess what? I know myself enough to know that I don't rock with that shit. I'm not that. I'm, I want to hurt a goddamn fly. You feel what I'm saying? I might squat it sometimes, but I have balance. I have balance. And guess what? I would never take my hand to hit my mom's. You understand? Unless I'm under some type of possession and see women got to understand this, especially women got kids. When you say negative things to your kids, you create the monsters that you resent later on in life. I'm going to say it to you. I don't care if y'all feel fucked up about it. I'm telling you, you women got kids. You talk crazy to your kids. You call your kids all kind of fucked up names. You ain't shit, Jill. Just like your dad, he ain't shit, and you ain't shit like your dad. Well, guess what? You're going to create a monster that's going to torment your ass. Lucky for my mother in the vision, I didn't hit her ass. I didn't beat her ass. I told her, you know what? I'm better than what you called me. I'm better than what you said I was. Because I know who I am. And I'm willing enough to, I, I, I have enough heart. And I have enough walk. And I have enough anointing in God to forgive your ass. Regardless of what you put me through. And God bless your soul. Merry Christmas. But I needed to get closure to that. And I got closure today. So that's the best Christmas gift that the spirit world, Jesus Christ, has given me. Hallelujah. I'm free from those tyranny of those words. Because think about the woman who eats all the time, who overeats, that she has an eating problem. Every time she's depressed, she eats herself to death because of insecurities, just because she didn't the validation that she needed from her parents or from the world. What about the brother who puts the gun to his head because he never got the love from his parents or the people around him? People got to watch what they say out their mouth to people. Just because you're bitter and you're hurt and because you fear something, you project your fucking fears on people and you put curses on people because the tongue has the power of good and evil. It power of life and death and when you say certain things to your kids like yo you never be shit you're just like your dad 
You're putting a curse, a generational curse on your kids and you're creating the same demons that you will fear. Because this is what happened before I woke up from the vision. My mother was like, whoa, he didn't hit me. He didn't beat me. He just said, I forgave him. Oh, man. And then she was looking at herself and I was looking at her and I kind of I felt pity for her. Because I was like, yo, all these years you called me a demon child. You said I was this and that. And I didn't show you, I didn't show you any type of violence. I showed you compassion. I said, I forgave you. That's greater than violence. To do good is greater than doing bad. That's why people resent doing good, hate people who are good men and good women, because it's easier to do bad than to do good. It's easier to curse somebody than to bless somebody. Because if you see somebody doing good, you're jealous. If you see somebody with something you have, it's hard for you to bless them in your heart because in your heart, you're naturally evil. But if you face that evil in your motherfucking heart, you come and own that demon. You say, listen, God, I'm a sinner. I forgive my mother for all those things she said to me. Yes, I know it affected me as, as I was growing up. I try not to be those things, but guess what? It messed up my interactions with women. It messed up my interactions with people. It made people run away from me because they really felt that I was a demonic possessed person. They felt that I was weird. They felt that I was strange. And all these years I've been dealing with that shit on the inside. Inside, just seeking validation from the outside when I should have been validated on the inside. And that shit be reflected on the outside. That's true spiritual transformation. Somebody needed to hear this message today. Somebody on Christmas who's dealing with suicidal thoughts. Somebody on Christmas who's dealing with depression. Somebody who is dealing with the thoughts in their skull or their head needed to hear that shit. Forgiveness is the way out. It's easier said than done. I know it. I know. But this is this is how you get the captive free. Jesus Christ gave me that vision for me to overcome. He allowed me to go through that situation because it's, it was time. God does everything in his perfect time. Hallelujah. He does that. He said, Neil, you about to be 30 years old. You're in a new chapter of your life. You in a whole new phase of your life. You can't take the old man with you. You got to leave the things of your past when you was living back home with your parents. You got to leave that in the past because I need you to be. You can't have these things haunting you. You can't have these things taunting you. You have to become a master of your inner world. How the hell you brothers and sisters calling yourself gods and goddesses? But you don't have no control of your inner world. You're still tormented by the demons that plagued you from your childhood. See, this video is for everybody. It's not for no Christians person. It's for a person that's suffering right now, both men and women. You've been living your mother's and father's family curses and hexes. That's what we here to talk about. And you're possessed by those words, because those words are inside of your heart. Out of the issues of the heart, the issues of life. Out of the abundance of heart, you will bear and grow the fruit. So the fruits of your life is the results of those curses. Let me say that one more time. The results of your life is the results of those, of those seeds that your parents planted in you since you were a child. If not your parents, then your friends and other people. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody text me right now. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Okay. This is very important for y'all. And the reason why I felt my spirit gave me this vision before I end this video is because we're going into 2020. We don't know what we to expect in this new year. We always going to make these these plans, grand plans for the new year, like next year, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to eat more. But every time you make these plans, the devil's there listening to your plans, right? And he is counteracting that with your fears and your trauma. Let me say that one more time. Every time that y'all guys make a new year resolution, 
on New Year's and say, yo, I'm going to cut off bad people. I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to stop being a whoremonger or a whore, right? The devil comes knocking at your door again with the trauma, your pain, your guilt, your condemnation. And you've been living in a loop for so many years. It's like the, it's like the show of Naruto. It's like that Izanami shit. It's like it's like you in a in, in a in a, 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 a genjutsu that keeps repeating itself over and over and over and over. And you just need to get the conscious awareness and develop the conscious awareness to be aware that this is a genjutsu. This is an illusion. This is not who you are. This is not what God called you to be. You're greater than that. You were born for a purpose. Don't ever make people make you feel like you are the scourge of the earth. Don't ever make people make you feel like you don't have a purpose because you may not be where they are at. Don't let people project their pride, their arrogance, their fear, their insecurities on you. This is a well of the matrix. They're projecting. Everybody projects a mass. They're not showing you who they are. It only takes real motherfuckers like me and many other brothers and sisters who have come to the realization of self that speak these truths full messages like this and be honest with the world. I'm not ashamed to talk about my history with my mother. I'm not ashamed to talk about the things that she put me through. I'm not ashamed because you know what? I feel and I know that this message is going to help somebody get the Lord in their life. This message is going to help somebody accept Jesus Christ in their life. This message is going to help somebody change the perspective of how they've been seeing life. This, this message is going to save somebody from trying to kill themselves. Because all their lives they've been feeling that way and they just didn't know what it was. And I'm trying to say in this video, it's generational curses because your mother and father said negative words to your ass when you was a kid and you've been living with that curse all your life. The reason why you can't get in no relationship, the reason why you ain't dealing with the opposite sex the way you need to deal with them. A reason why a lot of you women are feminists is because your mother fucked your mind up. Your father fucked your mind up. A reason why a lot of you brothers in Midtown and you say, I don't like women and women ain't shit is because your mother fucked you up. Like my mother fucked me up. Your, your father fucked you up, never gave you red pill knowledge about women. Let's be honest in this video today. That's my Christmas gift to y'all. Let's be honest with ourselves. We can't go into 2020 with the same mindset. It's a totally different year, totally different energy, totally different vibration. I'm not putting out no new year resolution because my resolution is in God's hand. My resolution, my walk with God is dictated by the spirit. I'm not making no plans. Whatever God has for me to do next year, I will do the will of my father. I'm not going to do the will of this flesh because the flesh was controlled by generational curses. Let me say that one more time. I'm not going to do the will of myself because myself is the flesh and the flesh is going to do the will of your generational curses. This is why you niggas drink. This is why you niggas smoke. This is why you niggas have sex to escape from the miserable reality that's in your subconscious. You are running away from the truth instead of embracing the truth. And when you embrace the truth and accept the truth, you cannot no longer be possessed or controlled by that which you own. You can only be possessed and controlled by what you are trying to run away from. This is how demons attack us. If you own up to the shaming language, if you own it, Claim it, name it. It has control over no one because you have control over it. Let me give you a quick Easter egg before I end this video because I'm in the spirit right now. Go back to Genesis when God created Adam and told Adam to name every beast in the field. Right? When Adam named an animal or thing, he had control over it. Why? Because without a name, it is free to roam. So if you don't own the generational curses, you don't own those shaming language that people called you and named you and stereotype you, then it owns you because it's a spirit that's roaming on its own. I'm just drop a signs for y'all. Y'all figure it out. 
So when Adam named everything, including his wife, that's the reason why man is the head of wife. Another red pill truth. Because Eve couldn't name herself. Adam gave her a name. Flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. Your name is Eve. Hmm. Because man is created in the image and likeness of the, of the father. So I would not let my mother control me through generational curses. I would not let my father control me through generational curses. I forgive them for all that they put me through. I forgive them for the things that they knew nothing about. But I will no longer be controlled by such things for I am created in the image and likeness of the heavenly father. Yes, I look like my physical father. I have his physical futures. But in my spirit, man, I am created in the image and likeness of the father who is in heaven. And that's the true nature of man, spirit. You are being controlled by your flesh. Your flesh deals with the nature of your physical father. This is why in your flesh, you do the will of your father, the devil. In your flesh, this is why you, brothers and sisters, do every single thing that your parents told you to do subconsciously, vicariously, because it deals with generational curses. This is why Jesus Christ said, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. I hope you brothers got some new enlightenment. Sisters, I hope you understand now why you eat so goddamn much and you've been wondering why every time I'm fucking depressed, I'm always eating. That's a generational curse. Rebuke those demons in the name of Jesus. If you need me to pray for you, sisters and brothers, hit me up in my DM. I am all welcome to hear your testimonials. Be understand this process. I understand this walk of life. I understand what people go through. And I'm here to be a light. What the Most High sent me to be a light to the world. Because he was a light of the world and is the light of the world. So with that being said, leave your comments in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. And Merry Christmas to all of y'all. And a Happy New Year's. Peace.